Hello everybody, welcome to the Canadian Shield, your trusted source for analysis. My name is Sterling, I'm your host. 338 released some new projections or some new uh, combinations of various polling that's going on around the country and I thought it would be fun that, to look at because of the um, Imyan elections that are going to be happening in the month of October in Canada. Regular viewers of my channel will know my position on polling as it, as it pertains to being absolute. I mean, in 2015, for example, the Liberals were trailing everybody and they ended up winning that election. So there's there's a lot of this is significant ability to swing it with many of these polls. Nonetheless, it's fun to look at when you think about British Columbia having a provincial election, Saskatchewan having a provincial election, and New Brunswick having a provincial election all in the month of October. And I thought, let's have a look at some of the uh, projections by 338 in those particular provinces, as well as the federal numbers that are out, which are really well for if you're a conservative fan, and not so well if you're a NDP fan. All right, let's begin this little journey with looking at New Brunswick, where they have apparently 49 seats in their in their uh, provincial legislature, and the Liberals are projected to win the, the popular vote. I, I can't see why that would be. They currently have a conservative government, like the premier of, of New Brunswick is a conservative. Now, it, it could be that the people are just switching because they're mad at the conservatives so they're, they're voting for the uh liberal party i mean i don't know for example i know that there's some some problems going on over there with the um teachers being able to not tell the parents about the changing of the genders at the schools and i know that there's a lot of problems with um immigration like i know that they want to start to resettle a lot of people in new brunswick New Brunswick is not necessarily a uh, very rural, uh, excuse me, a very urban province. There's a lot of rural in it. So I don't know why the, the typically those people tend to vote conservative because they don't like a lot of change and they don't like a lot of variation. I don't know why the seats are projected to be this way. Like I'm not up to date enough, but I can say that it's interesting that they're not, neither party is projected to get a majority. And that could create a lot of stagnant, that could give a lot of power to the two green seats, eh? Like if you're all of a sudden sitting there with the ability to swing the vote one way or the other, I imagine you can get a lot of stuff. Now, because it just goes in the, in the along the way, we can see that the Saskatchewan party is projected to take a majority of what is 31 seats required for a majority in Saskatchewan. And the other party that is going to grab seats in Saskatchewan is the NDP. The, they seem to be the only ones who are going to get seats, the Saskatchewan party and the NDP. Now, it's, the NDP was formed and founded in Saskatchewan, so you might think NDP and you think Jagmeet Singh, but there are people there that are going to have different perceptions of the NDP, not to mention that, of course, the rural parts out west are all NDP. Like the city, excuse me, the urban parts out west are all NDP. The uh, cities, uh, Calgary and the city of, of in, in Saskatchewan tend to go NDP. I don't know why that is. Like, I don't know what it is all of a sudden the person starts urban living and they think to themselves that they don't want to have money in their pocket. They don't want to balance their checkbook. They don't want to make sure that their government is accountable. They just want all of the social programs that put constantly put debt which that debt brings taxes and that taxes takes money right out of their pocket i don't understand the logic there like i don't know why in their mind they don't tell themselves that they want a fiscally responsible government why i can't say that what the mindset is because i don't i don't follow that logic when i vote i vote on who's going to make us the most money i think that the way that everybody you know it's funny how people will live their lives telling themselves that they have to change chase the biggest money that they have and yet they'll turn around to their government and say no no let's rack up some debt <laughs> oh it makes no sense to me however when we come back to it and we we understand that uh, premier mo is the one that's pushing and fighting for the uh, carbon tax we can see that he's going to he's projected to win a a, a land uh, not a landmark what do you call it uh, a supermajority where he won't even have to worry about 
any of the laws that he may or may not want to pass. And that will mean that people who are voting for the NDP are really kind of going to be not chomp, chomping at the bit, I suppose. We'll see. That one is also in uh, to happen in uh, this month in October. And of course, the one that everybody is aware of is British Columbia, where the British Columbia NDP are just they're out there trying to make people change the name that they write up for conservatives on the ballot they're losing their minds <laughs> however now it's projected that it's a dead heat and even the conservatives will win by the popular vote i think it would be really funny <laughs> if it played out like that and, and i mean i don't mean funny in in this just funny like if it was on a from the juxtaposition where you would have 46 and 46 and then the one green seat <laughs> Imagine the pressure that fellow would be under, person would be under, every time there was a vote that people disagreed on, everybody would be looking right at them, all, 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 all the 92 other members of the provincial parliament would be staring right at them going, hey, which way are you going to vote? Now, I guess that would make you the bell of the ball on the one hand, but on the other hand, that would also make you the scapegoat for anything that ever went wrong. Like if, you, if you were the deciding vote, and they could just say, well, the green made it happen, and now it's turned into a disaster. Again, I don't understand why they would continue to endorse a province like a, a government that has brought such disastrous economic policies. Anyway, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out um, in British Columbia. Now we'll come to the federal stuff. And of course, I'm sure it's no surprise that the conservatives are projected to take a, a super majority, 228 seats, out of what's saying there is 172, which uh, probably is correct. Um, what I would like to point out is that the Bloc and the Liberals are really, really close to one another for the provincial seats in Quebec, right? And that's only 11 seats one way or the other. It's different. So if we think, okay, like, and I'll show you, I'll, well, I'll show you right now, the, the provincial, the regional projections are re really interesting in my mind. We can see the British Columbia's 35 per seats are projected to go to the Conservatives and 36 in Alberta with only one seat going to the NDP. In Saskatchewan, nobody, that'll be a complete representation of the Conservative Party. Manitoba is a 50-50 split. Now, when you look at Manitoba and you see that it's a 4-3 for the NDP and the Liberals, let's just say for the sake of argument, that four gets cut down to a two. And the you know the NDP gets one and the Conservative gets one. That's not relevant. What matters is that the if the Liberal seat gets cut down to two, all of a sudden the projection of fifty three becomes fifty one. And if we say, okay, now we we come to Ontario, and if that number gets cut down to sixteen instead of eighteen, all of a sudden it's forty nine. And then we come over to Quebec and we see that there is you know a neck and neck situation where yeah, okay, the bloc is projected to double the seats of the liberals but what if it becomes more what if they go to 45 and the liberals come down to 18 and all of a sudden with with these little adjustments here and there you see that the bloc quebecois could actually end up being the official opposition which i think is just hilarious i know that they've already been the official opposition once in canada but in those days they were still looking forward to the to the, to the 95 and now we we are in a much things that the landscape of the country has changed and we're going to have this massive majority <laughs> we'll have a couple of liberals and a couple of ndp off into the corner and we will have a, a political system on the one side of the opposition who who wants to destroy canada who as as canada ex, uh, exists today they don't want anything to do with the with the canadian people and on the other side will be the conservatives who are trying to re rebuild the country from the the ashes of the liberal party who it is astounding how much damage they have done in such a short span of time I, I really I'm looking forward to finding out um, if the if the bloc can overtake the the Liberal Party in Quebec because that's where the big the big seats the the numbers will have to change. I mean it's not just about the Liberals coming down; it's also about the the bloc going up. Like if we can get you know if the bloc got to 50 seats, oh, how much how would that impact Quebec? Right? Would they take them all from the Conservatives? Would it make the NDP disappear completely? I don't I don't know. I'm only trying to. Um, in my mind could just create it just see what would happen just to be creative the 98 seats projection in ontario is a staggering 
uh, change. I think that that's uh, suitable. However, I believe that when when we what we need is a strong majority government that will hold us and get us out of this mess and make everybody have money in their pocket again, right? Because the taxation in this country, you can say, well, we're running up debts and all of that stuff, but there's somebody somewhere asking for that money back. And why would we not want to develop this country for people that are Canadian, right? I mean, people don't come here from other countries and emigrate here because they want to be poor. They want to they want to have a good job. They want to have good money. They want to have the things that they don't have in their other countries. If they could have the same thing, they would stay there. Nobody would move if they didn't if they didn't if they weren't chasing that dream. I mean, the odd person here and there, sure, but for the most part, people are like, no, no, I've lived around here my whole life, but I got a good job, so I'm just going to sit tight. That these are people that don't have that situation. So that's what their dream is. That's what they're chasing. They're chasing that cal- quality and caliber of living. And they want their own place. They want their own house. They're chasing that dream. And I know people will say, well, it's a dream. It's not a reality. But the, with, the, with the work and the effort, if we just take all of the all of the destruction and get it out of the way, sweep it aside, and we you know remove the stain of the Liberal Party, we can provide that for people because this is the kind of country that we have. And these are the kind of people that are coming here, right? These are the types of people that that are not afraid to put in the put in the work. So giving a super majority to the to a, any government besides the disastrous liberal government, truthfully, but giving them to the, you know, let's make let's repair the, you know, the force, the four promises that the conservatives are making. It seems to me that, you know, on paper, as I sit here right now, it seems to me that it'll be a great way to, to reverse the fortunes of this country. All right. I just wanted to uh, go over these uh, projections. Sometimes it's funny or it's fun to to think about what it would be like in the minds of the Liberal Party if they only ended up with 50 seats. I'd like to be the fly on the wall for that. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.